told me she wanted to go to my apartment to have a sleepover. Right now at noon, we'll hear testimony from the former Badger football player accused of sexual assault. And President Trump announces new tariffs against China, what he's saying to downplay consumer concerns. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. We start with a first alert traffic note for the Department of Transportation is reporting a crash on I-39 northbound near McFarland. That's causing some backups. It started around 1045 this morning. The area marked in red on the 511 Wisconsin map is still showing backups. All lanes are blocked right now, so you should avoid that area. We are hearing for the first time from the former Badger football player, Quintus Cephas, about the sexual assault allegations against him and they never told me to stop, that was, you know, consent. Today in court, he described the night of the alleged assault starting at a bar where he says one girl was trying to set him up with another girl. Sifa says one of the alleged victims was dancing with him the whole night at the bar, then asked him for a kiss. She told me that she wouldn't go to my apartment if I didn't give her a kiss and, um, I tried to explain to her that I don't like I don't kiss people in public um, for various reasons. She was kind of had her hands around my waist and she was grabbing my butt and she was also trying to grab like go in my pants. So I was just trying to like really keep her like tell her to relax. Cephas told the courtroom when they got back to his apartment, one of the victims went straight to his room and took her clothes off. He says the other girl followed. Cephas says he was excited. He just had a consensual threesome and said that it was his fault for asking his roommate to take a naked photo of the girls. Cephas claims that picture is the reason he's on trial. We'll have continuing coverage on this today on News 3 Now and on our website. Let's head over to the Weather Center now. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast. Another nice day out there. Yeah, still plenty of sunshine outside. That's what we're going to be looking at as we go through the rest of this afternoon as well. A live look from the station camera. The skies are blue. Let's see if we can find any cloud cover here on Visible Cloud Track. The reality is there's very little over the state of Wisconsin. Yes, you have some throughout parts of the high plains, but it is not working its way closer towards the lake shore. Temperatures are mainly in the upper 70s. We have a few low 80 starting to show up Madison at 79 Janesville at 81 and those winds are still coming out of the north and northwest at five miles per hour. This is still keeping that humidity on the lower side. A lot of those dew points are into the low 50s, but notice what's starting to happen as you work your way towards the west and towards the north. You see those dew points on the increase. Eventually, that's what we're going to feel as we work our way into the weekend. But for now, expect that sunshine to continue. Our highs should top out right around 83. Mark. All right, check back in a few minutes. Thank you, Chris. Okay. New at noon, Sauk County dispatchers say a woman is safe and uninjured after driving into the Wisconsin River. This happened near Spring Green around 6.30 this morning on Highway 14 near the Wisconsin River Bridge. Deputies were able to pull her vehicle out of the water. Officials are still investigating how it happened. We are working to learn more about a two-car vehicle crash in Whitewater last night. A viewer sent us this photo of the crash. You can see debris all over the road and a camper that was also involved. This happened around 730 on Highway 12 near the Highway N intersection. Officials have not released information about injuries as of yet. 18 fire departments from Wisconsin and Illinois responded to this barn fire last night in Sharon. Fire officials say they found a heavy fire coming from the second floor hay area of the barn. Crews were able to contain the fire within an hour, but stayed on scene for seven hours to put it out completely. All animals were evacuated safely. The cause of the fire under investigation. A New York Police Department administrative judge has officially recommended the officer involved in the death of Eric Gardner should be fired. CNN reports the much anticipated decision is the latest internal step in a process that will resolve Officer Daniel Pantale 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 Pantaleo's future. Pantaleo's attorney has about two weeks to draft a response. Police Commissioner James O'Neill gets the final say. He hasn't hinted on what he may do. After more than 30 years, the U.S. has officially withdrawn from a nuclear pact with Russia, raising fears of a new arms race. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo wrote in a tweet this morning, 
Russia violated the INF, and leaving the agreement is in the best interest of our collective security. The U.S. claims Russia has been building and testing intermediate-range missiles in violation of the 1987 treaty since 2014. The White House is downplaying the effect President Trump's latest tariff announcement will have on American consumers, while China promises to retaliate if the president goes through with the threat. Katherine Johnson is at the White House with the latest on this escalating trade dispute. President Trump is stepping up the pressure on China to reach a trade deal. We will be taxing the hell out of China. That's all there is. The president threatened to add 10 percent tariffs on an additional $300 billion worth of Chinese goods after negotiations between the two countries broke down. The tariffs would affect consumer products from China, including clothing, shoes and electronics, such as smartphones. The president said the new tariffs could go into effect September 1st if no deal is reached. That means Americans could start seeing higher prices at the store this fall. But the Trump administration is downplaying those concerns. Any consumer impact is very, very small. Wall Street continued its slide in the wake of the president's announcement. The Dow opened lower Friday, a day after it closed down 200 points following the president's tweet. The stock market reaction is reflecting the fact that the large parts of the manufacturing sector and the retail sector and other sectors that have been doing a lot of business with China in both directions are going to have to reset their expectations. The White House continues negotiations with China next month. Katherine Johnson, CBS News, the White House. And the Commerce Department said Friday the U.S. trade deficit with China fell 7.5 percent in June to $30 billion. Swimmers from 13 Madison area outdoor pools will show off their skills during this weekend's All-City Swim Meet. Since 2008, the All-City League has partnered with Second Harvest to donate more than one and a half million meals to people in need. And they'll continue those efforts this weekend. For a full schedule and parking information, go to channel3000.com. Even if you aren't going to the event, chances are your weekend travel plans will be affected. We also have information on what areas to avoid on channel3000.com. And there's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. It's tomato time here in the Test Kitchen. And just wait until you see what we're cooking up. I bet it's not what you're expecting. It's the
If you've been to the grocery store or the farmer's market lately to pick up some tomatoes, you've probably noticed the pile of green tomatoes next to the regular ones. And if you're thinking, who buys those? And what do you do with them? Let me show you how to turn these into a classic Southern favorite. We start by coring a few green tomatoes and cutting them into quarter inch slices. The nice thing about them is they cut easily since they're nice and firm. Next, we toss them in a beaten egg that we mix with a bit of water along with some salt and pepper. From there, we bread them in a combo of self-rising cornmeal and flour before skillet frying them until they're golden, which takes just minutes. And since we're using self-rising cornmeal, the coating sort of puffs up. That's it. They're ready to serve as is, or you could sprinkle them with a bit of salt. Maybe serve them with your favorite dipping sauce, or if you're a true southerner, you might want to serve these along with some cheesy grits. To get the recipe for our fried green tomatoes, while the stores are still brimming with them, head over to our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a classic southern way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. The beautiful weather continues. We'll see temperatures in the low 80s all weekend long. Meteorologist Chris Reese tells us when we might have to dodge a shower coming up in your first alert forecast. Our call for action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your consumer issues. You can call, call our hotline. Volunteers will help you with any consumer complaints. The number 608-270-2833. The service is open every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 11 and 1. Toyota is outperforming Honda, and Apple is suspending a program that allows contractors to listen to recordings from Siri. Diane King Hall has your Money Watch report. The U.S. economy grew by 164,000 jobs last month. That's according to the Labor Department. While it was in line with expectations, it was a slowdown from June. The unemployment rate held steady at 3.7%, which is nearly a 50-year low. 
A tale of two automakers today. Honda is reporting a 29% drop in profit to $1.6 billion as U.S. sales slide. The maker of the Civic Accord and Odyssey minivan is also lowering its annual profit forecast. On the flip side, Toyota performed better than its rival, raking in $6.4 billion in profit from April to June. Apple is suspending its internal program that allows contractors to listen in on recordings from Siri. The move comes after consumers voiced privacy concerns. A report says contractors assigned to analyze the recordings regularly heard confidential information and private conversations. The tech titan says it uses teams to analyze recordings of commands to Siri for quality and improvement purposes. Today is National Ice Cream Sandwich Day, and Oscar Mayer created a special ice cream sandwich with bits of real hot dog. The company announced it has partnered with a New York ice cream company to create the Ice Dog Sandwich, featuring cookies as buns and bits of candied hot dog meat. To find out how you can get one, you can visit Oscar Mayer's Twitter page. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King-Hall. Diane, thank you. At the noon hour, the Dow Industrials down 248 points. The Nasdaq off 141. The S&P 500 down 33. Let's check in now with Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke. You know, I like ice cream and I like hot dogs, but I don't know if I like I them together. That's what I thought, too. I can do bacon and ice cream. That hot dog idea, they should have whipped that up before Wisconsin State Fair. You got all <laughs> kinds of crazy food over there. I mean, I just had my staff come back. They said something about chocolate-covered crickets or something like that. So I guess there's somebody for every food that's out there, huh? Let's talk a little bit about what's happening at the Wisconsin State Fair. I want to remind you that tomorrow is another all for one show this is an opportunity for kids with intellectual disabilities to get a chance to work with those 4-h and ffa kids and exhibit an animal i've got a great story up on fabulous farm babe on facebook of a young man named jack 16 years old got to show a pig named buddy yesterday afternoon his mom just overwhelmed with the opportunity and jack pretty doggone happy with uh, getting a chance to work with buddy the pig as well as uh, those 4 h and ffa kids the fair continues through the 11th a uh, note to you horse owners make sure that you're up to speed on vaccinations it's that time of the year we just got our first official confirmation of eastern equine encephalitis it killed a horse up in barron county the department of ag trade and consumer protection veterinarians reminding horse owners that that eastern equine encephalitis 90 more than 90 percent of the time it is fatal to the horse so make sure you're double checking your vaccinations and uh, make sure you stick with that vaccination program especially when we've got uh, that sticky stuff and the mosquitoes around boy not much to talk about today as far as the dairy complex is concerned barrel cheese unchanged 40 pound block cheese unchanged double a butter unchanged at 232 a pound and i'm feeling guilty mark today here it is second of august family fun night up in green bay and i'm not even sport my green and gold just yet <clears throat> But uh, it should be a great night to sit in the stands, watch the scrimmage between uh, the offense and defense, and get ready to open the season officially sometime next week. What happened, no green and gold? I just, I completely, <laughs> I'm so concentrating on the state fair, completely flipped my gibbet until I got a text from somebody that wants to park up at Pambo. So get out of my way. I'm headed to Green Bay. All right. Sounds <laughs> good. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Yep. Let's check in now with Chris and the weekend weather forecast. Hey, things are starting out on a very nice, warm and comfortable note. Temperatures are still in the upper 70s right now and the skies are still remaining very blue. The dew points are still in the 50s, which means the air still feels dry as well. Here temperatures throughout the state right now. Notice a lot of folks are still in the upper 70s and some low 80s showing up. Chainzilla 81 Mineral Point. You guys are 82 right now. You work your way over towards Boscobel. It's 81 degrees as well, folks. It still feels good out there. We still have some areas of drier air coming in from the lake, but folks, as you work your way towards the western half of the state and towards the north, those dew points are starting to creep up. Black River Falls, the dew point at 64 right now. There is a lot more where that came from as you work your way towards the north and west. So we're starting to get just a little bit sticky when it comes to how it actually feels as you step outside. Eventually, there's a possibility that things may come become 
uncomfortable for a time, but the temperatures should stay in check. No showers or thunderstorms over Wisconsin right now. I'm watching one disturbance as you work your way back towards the high plains and down through the central plains. This is what might play a little bit of an impact on our weather as we go into tomorrow. This region of high pressure is sliding over towards the east. That's allowing those winds to start to become a little bit more southerly overall. It's pumping in a little bit more moisture and we have a little weak front towards the north and this disturbance towards the south and west. That may be just enough to disturb our atmosphere this weekend to try to fire off some showers or thunderstorms. In fact, watch what happens as we get into Saturday afternoon. Future track tries to show some areas where some showers or thunderstorms may develop. We are going to be watching that very closely, folks. I do think it's a little bit overdone and I'll show you that again in just a moment, but that chance of rain is starting to ramp up into the weekend. Well, this afternoon, the sunshine continues. Look for those temperatures right around 83. We'll cool down towards 62 tonight and then watch what happens into tomorrow afternoon. The atmosphere is going to try to bubble up a few showers or thunderstorms. Again, I think this coverage is a bit much compared to what the reality will be into tomorrow, but that rain chance is starting to increase. It won't be a washout, but it'll be there tomorrow afternoon. We'll turn that off as the sun begins to set. We'll cool right back down into the mid 60s as we head into your Sunday. Here's the overall pattern. The big ridge of heat is trying to break down as we move towards the middle of next week. I think we get into a setup that might actually become a bit more favorable for those rain chances. Particularly, I am watching the area right around Thursday as the colder air is towards the north and the warmer air is towards our south and east. We get in on an area that is favorable for some thunderstorm development. So that's going to be something to truthfully pay attention to folks. Otherwise, this afternoon we're going to be mostly sunny again. Those temperatures topping out right around 83 into tonight. Mostly clear and comfortable. Winds will be lightly out of the south. Expect those lows right around 62. But here's what happens as we go through time. That slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm tomorrow night. We'll watch that again with another slight chance on Tuesday. But then by the time we get you towards Thursday, that rain chance is a little bit more abundant. It'll be something to keep a close eye on. All right. Not a bad weekend. Not a terrible weekend at all. all right. No. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Next to Nuno, Wisconsin Adventure Park plans a special outing for people of all abilities. A look at the adaptations they're making for accessible zip lining. Next.
Well, just into the Channel 3000 Alert Center, the Department of Health Services is urging Wisconsinites to stop vaping. Right now, DHS confirms 11 cases of teens and young adults hospitalized with severe lung disease that's been linked to vaping, including in Walworth and Dodge counties. Seven other cases still under investigation. The announcement comes a day after a group of state lawmakers say they want to add vape and e-cigarette products to the state's 2009 smoke-free air law that bans smoking inside public places. Well, people who always wanted to try zip lining but weren't able to because of a physical disability had their dreams come true. Justin Zavari reports from the new Zoo Adventure Park in Green Bay. Three, two, one, go! Zip lining is a unique thrill, something I and several others concluded Thursday at the new Zoo's Adventure Park. But the activity isn't always easy to participate in for those with physical disadvantages. It's just the structure of our tower, so it has some pretty steep steps. So unfortunately, during our regular operations, we can't always accommodate everybody. Wheelchairs, sometimes people who are just um, have difficulty walking, especially up steps. It could be due to age or a physical disability. To give the zip lining experience to more people, the Adventure Park hosted accessible zip lining Thursday afternoon. Park workers used ropes to lift riders to the top of the 50 foot tall tower, after which they were free to slide down the 1,000 foot long zip line. It's something that we definitely have to plan out because we need a considerable adjustment to the way we operate on a day to day basis to make this happen. While accessible zip lining may not be offered frequently, they need to be experienced only once to make a lasting memory. I like to say it feels like you're gliding through the air, almost like a bird soaring through the sky. It's not like a roller coaster. There's no fall. There's no free fall feeling. It's just a really smooth glide all the way down. All right, that sunshine continues as we go through uh, the rest of the afternoon. Look for those temperatures topping out right around 83 degrees into tomorrow. We'll have a slight chance of a shower or a thunderstorm into the afternoon. We're going to be watching that closely because the models are trying to become a little bit more robust on that rain chance. Sunday looks good at the moment. We could see some showers and thunderstorms late Monday into Tuesday and then again on Thursday. But overall, the general scheme of the forecast is drier than things have been lately. All right, that's our time for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here at 4. Have a good afternoon.